Hey guys, welcome to BSL Season 16, Round of 32, Group A. This is going to be the Losers match. We have Wizards starting in the bottom left-hand corner as the Black Zerg bottom right-hand corner. We have Ball starting as the Blue Protoss. I have a feeling this might be the same WTG Ball, who's done an immense amount of tournament organizing and ladder stuff with WGT, with WG Tour. Uh, and really a hero of the community. So if that is the same ball, which I think is the case, go ahead and, yeah, I got to root for him because hero, pillar of the community, really. Him, LML, Zero, I'm trying to think of other guys out there that are kind of quiet in the background but do a bunch of, uh, that really make the, the tournament sale. I guess CRVT, a lot of the people who do all the donations of everything. Everybody in the CPL community, so heroes. But I, th I think that's the same ball, but I'm not positive. I don't think this is actually Baller Lord, who uh, is also Slay the Spire player. And a very good Slay the Spire player. Go check him out. He's got a fun stream. Tell him I sent you if you do. Anyway, we'll see how this plays out. I know that Ball is fairly active in the CPL community. I know that he's a pretty solid player overall. And I'm going to say that him versus Stunter, I'm a little shocked that he ended up dropping that match. I was expecting him to win at multiple multiple scenarios, and I'm wondering if that might have shaken his confidence for this match a little bit. Looks like he's going to go for a Forge first opener. It has been more stereotypical for Protoss these days to open up Gateway first. It looks like we are, in fact, seeing a Spawning Pool opener here on the opposite side. Not an Overpool, looks like, or sorry, an Overpool. So that is going to allow earlier Zerglings out, and the Overlord should get the Scout on the corner in sufficient time. Usually with this, I have seen sometimes Zerg skip building the full complement of Zerglings here. The Overlord spots that forge on the edge, trying to stay out of vision range so that Ball isn't tipped off, but it looks like Ball has already scouted that 12 o'clock location, is gonna make his way towards the bottom left. That probe should be in position, but it, we do, okay, so we do see the initial, no, just two Zerglings. And this, this I'm going to chastise a little bit, is yeah, at least go down, check the cannon to see whether you should produce Zerglings or not. So now sees the cannon and backs off. So knows that, yeah, two Zerglings is fine, sufficient. You're not going to be able to break the front. You did force something along those lines in a Nexus. In fact, being constructed to follow. Zerglings not plugging the gap, though. The, oh, but a nice little drone blockade. I don't know if that was intentional or accidental. To deny information, what that does do is, is that potentially opens up some 973 play in the dark. Oftentimes players will follow this up, particularly against Forge First openers, where you have smaller zealot counts in the early uh, early game. This hero probe is going to be critical to, first of all, detect whether there's a third base out on the map, where it is, and what the drone saturation is to get that critical, get those critical pieces of information. The Overlord from Wizard going to go ahead and dive in to try to confirm, and hang out there to go ahead and confirm tech. In the background, two additional Zerglings being constructed, maybe to block the gap altogether. Usually probes, and this is where it comes down to probe discipline and being able to spot saturation fairly quickly and rapidly. I think that probe is going to be able to wander, maybe going to be able to wander up. Nope, not going to find that third hatchery. Looks like he's going to scout the 10 o'clock location first. So still hasn't seen the third, however. Natural expansion is up. We are seeing a mutation to Lair, so isn't looking like a 973 play here. It looks like it's going to be more Mutalisk in the mid-game, so three hatch Mutalisk. We'll see if there is a more aggressive play after that. Simulator being warped at the natural expansion, Cybernetics Core along the natural. So Ball setting himself up to have a lot of gas in the mid-game, potentially go for High Templar, Dark Templar. Every once in a while you'll see Reaver play, but haven't seen that in quite some time, and I'm not expecting that here. In fact, I'm more what Protoss have been doing these days in response to a lot of the shenanigans that Zerg have been pulling is going for that faster High Templar to have a little bit more padding as they build attack forces in the mid game. Drone saturating at the natural expansion, not yet saturated to the north. That probe still hasn't wandered up to discover that third yet, and still hasn't wandered in to the main to confirm the lair. So right here sees seven drones. So Wizard could actually play games with him right now and deny that information. Throwing seven, that might... We'll see if that forces some cannons. Yeah, so a preventative cannon already being dropped. And unfortunately, this cannon 
a little bit out of position to help provide defense against that spire timing, and that is that is what hurts. Losing that early information. As I say, I wasn't expecting early reavers. Here we got a quick robotics facility, potentially to go just that. Unfortunately, quick three hatch spire play is something that can be very, very strong against this exact style. It looks like plus one weapons is being upgraded to potentially negate that. But I'm a little bit worried about balls. He doesn't have a, a cannon at that natural or the main to really provide the protection. Spire is going to finish in not too long. It's going to come down to this Corsair Scout making its way. Doesn't look like there's an Overlord on the path to really capture anything. It looks like Wizard is going to move more towards 4-hatch to follow this up. Actually, 5-hatch, so maybe going to play 5-hatch or 6-hatch Spire play, which has been very, very popular as of late. Sees the Spire. Scourge being produced. So at the very least now, because there is a lack of capitalization on Wizard's part, Initially, he just wants to play more the macro game rather than going for the, the aggression early and just producing Scourge to do scouting of his own and Sim sitting this front with the Hydral Sten, so he's going to fold it back into 5-hatch Hydralisk Evolution Chamber to get those upgrades. Play, maybe go for a mid-game contain. That is going to allow Ball to theoretically establish some cannons along that natural expansion and at his main. It looks like he's already got a cannon there, also growing that Corsair fleet. We do see that robotic support bay. Second Stargate. So this is going to be Corsair Reaver. Should be fun. The Scourge spotting the Robo. So no, in theory, what they're up against. One of those Scourge lands on the Corsair, but not able to get a lot done otherwise. But that was a huge bit of scouting information for Wizard. So sees the double Stargate, sees the robotics. This is where... The plus one weapons will help, but it usually, against this sort of thing, you want mass amounts of Hydralisks at all locations. Burrow can actually be helpful in this scenario, and I'm looking to see if we're going to see a Burrow upgrade. I'm actually a little bit tempted to throw on the... Uh, I'll, I'll skip it. But Burrow can be very helpful against this, because while you're building shuttles and you're building Reavers, that means you're not building Observers. And so as long as you have Scourge in the air, you can uh, make your way back. But air control can be critical. Some Scourge are going to sit along... Yeah, they're just going to patrol along the southern border. We have an Overlord to the north. This is all... The other thing that Burrow allows is getting some Zerglings out around the map to go ahead and deny information that way. So plus one weapons finishing. Shuttle speed being upgraded. A second robotics facility being dropped. One difficulty of this build is while you can shell up on two bases for a long period of time, it's also very expensive. So you need to be sure to be doing a lot of economic damage as Zerg is trying to expand all over the map. Hydralis is making the way to the natural expansion rather than setting a defensive situation. The Scourge being cleared out, that might open things up, but Wizard actually crashing at the natural. That's going to force that Reaver on the defense here. Only three cannons. The, shot, the Reaver shots are going to be huge as far as where they land. Right now, they're not doing really great burst fire on the Hydralisks, but it's still sufficient to go ahead and push them back. The, the Corsairs need to hunt down some Overlords in the meantime while these Hydralisks are out of position. The Reaver trying to reposition to the north to get some shots here. Needs to wait for those Scarabs to build. The Forge is going to be taken out. That will open up the front door a little bit. So we got two Reavers here that are going to be the defense. Corsair's not finding any Overlords on the front in the meantime. And Wizard looks like he's been repelled. So just going to back out. Hasn't really sat... It looks like dedicating pretty heavily to that attack as well. Not really saturating his additional bases, which could hurt him and definitely slow him down as far as the game progression here. Corsair is pushing in, just gonna dive with that plus one weapons, putting Wizard in the red, deep into the red now. And that's great play for Ball. As Soon as he has a second shuttle up, he's got plenty of Reavers out. Oh, are you kidding me? Gonna go Fleet Beacon. So he's gonna follow this up with the dreaded Disruption Web. And this is also where, yeah, Burrow or having a lot of additional hatcheries out would be critical for Wizard. Instead, it looks like he wants to go for a mid-game contain or bust, which is not all that successful, particularly against this Reaver style, because Hydralisks get absolutely ravaged, absolutely destroyed. We do see that Burrow upgrade to try to negate uh, that that is going to... But the other thing is, is even if you do get that Burrow upgrade, these Reavers can do things like take down that Spire rather rapidly, take down the Spawning Pool rather rapidly, take out entire 
especially as you get larger uh, numbers, do a lot of damage out in the field. Shields being upgraded, which I don't think I've seen, kind of makes sense with this because it covers both the shuttles and the Corsair. They're making their way out. Hydralisk stationed towards the north. Another Hydralisk group there to the south. That shuttle is going to be able to make its way through. That Overlord not getting taken out. A couple Corsair losing their lives along the way. The Hydralisks making their way back to position to try to defend this. Not yet an engagement point for Ball trying to swing around the wings to find it. Does he have that D-Web upgraded yet? Not quite yet. Is maybe going to wait for that D-Web before he goes for that full engagement. Now we'll see how Wizard is on the burrow. Not burrowing. Making his way. It looks like he just wants to check out what expansions are there and keep Wizard on his toes. Wizard has droned up heavily as far as a turnaround. You can see the pockets of Hydralisks waiting, but this could be the engagement point. D-Web has finished. You've got a lot of Corsairs that have a good amount of energy, and you can see where a big D-Web on those Hydralisks and Reavers drop back here could be absolutely devastating at this northern location. It's going to come down to a bit of micro-execution here, and these are kind of the defining moments of the game. So the Corsair staging up, trying to bait the unit's back. I assume this is some hot keying back here. He knows they're here. There the D-Web is dropped. Trying to re-engage the position. I don't see a burrow happening, but no drop as of yet. Now the Reaver's dropped in the grouping. One Reaver very quickly picked off, though, with that plus one weapons. The second one picked off as well. The Hydral is able to get out of that D-Web positioning. This is kind of the, the difficulty of that D-Web play alongside that you just really have to be precise. And the other thing you have to do is, is you have to really box your opponent in and it requires a lot of micromanagement. So unfortunately, Ball not able to get the economic damage he was looking for right there. The Hydralis, he was very lucky that those Hydralis weren't on A move. He still has air control, but Wizard's sitting on the three bases and still in a pretty strong position. Because as far as raw attack trooping, you've got eight Corsair, a couple shuttle, and four Reavers, which isn't a lot to go ahead and grab a third base. And this is where Wizard, particularly sitting at that 45 drone count, can very rapidly turn this around into a sizable army to pin his opponent in and just start expanding all over the map. And I'm expecting him to do so in not too long. It looks like Wizard's follow-up, or sorry, Ball's follow-up upon that gambit not being all that successful is going to drop a couple gateways, try to macro up behind this. But this was a heavy investment that did not pay off. Wizard going to go ahead and grab that 10 o'clock base. Look at all these Hydralisks waiting and staging at these locations. Second Evolution Chamber is up as well. Wizard can go ahead and make his way towards the next stage of tech. He might want to just wait for that plus two weapons to finish before he makes any additional moves. Very cleverly moving his probe out with the shuttle and repositioning that army to the three o'clock. However, that's going to leave that natural expansion a little bit exposed. You, you do have the three reavers there. And this is where actually a quick tech switch back to Mutilus could be devastating for Ball. Because yes, he has plus one weapons. Yes, he has a lot of Corsair. But if he's not in the right position at the right time and also a combo attack with those Hydralis, could be bad. One shuttle getting picked, and off, picked off right there. The other trick for Wizard is, is it's just it's a macro race from here. Starting to gather up. It looks like he does want to go for assault, seeing all of those troops at the three o'clock location. With that plus two weapons, very quickly getting on top of that initial Reaver. Actually, briefly focusing that Nexus. So one Reaver down, able to take out everything at the natural otherwise. Oh, the shuttle dies with Reavers inside, and that leaves only Zealots. This could be the game-ending moment. D-Web being dropped to try to provide some protection, but Wizard, yeah, just has overwhelming attack forces. The last Reaver being wiped out. One Reaver going to spawn, but being spawned into Hydralisks. Yeah, there's a lot of D-Web, but that doesn't help Zealots on the ground, unfortunately. And the D-Web doesn't last incredibly long, so trying to reposition. Another Reaver has spawned. This might provide some time, but streams of units now making their way towards the natural expansion. GG from Ball right there from game one. I like the creative play. It's unfortunate that he wasn't able to execute, but it is... I can, I'm going to say this in Ball's favor. It is so hard to execute that particular build. Even the pros very rarely... You'll see Bisu try to pull, try to pull it off because he's got the micromanagement and the APM to make it happen. But it is... It's hard. It's hard to pull that style off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.